Goodness. Good job your fingers were clear. Fingers. Fingers. Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel bright and early in Lincolnshire. I'm round at Dad's house as always, where we've got the purple smart on the forecourt today, due for a little bit of surgery. If you haven't seen the previous video, well, we replaced all the front suspension components, shock absorbers, springs, top mounts, etc. And it changed the car. I can't believe it took me seven years to do it, if I'm honest, but it is a totally different car. I've got in the car and well, it's sitting at sort of a 45 degree angle now, so the rear definitely needs doing. I've bought some new shock absorbers, Quentin Hazels, they've cost 50 pounds from eBay. And I've bought some Apex springs as well. They've cost 30 pounds from eBay. That's what we've put on the front. So I've decided to put exactly the same at the back. In this video then, we are going to replace the shock absorbers and the springs on the rear of the Smart 450. Oh, what a great way to start the morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Hello, matey boy. How are you, you sleeping here? It's sort of eight o'clock in the morning and you're in the garage. Matey boy, I've been out doing jobs since before then. We've, uh, we've got a cup of tea ready, fueled for the day. We've got the Smart 450 here. You all right there? No, it's full of Nat, nuts. you've been spraying brake, uh, brake cleaner again. Um, what are we going to tackle this morning, first and foremost? I'm going to do everything. Everything. Springs, shockies. What? I could have had this bloody ass end off by now. We're getting experts at taking these little Lego cars apart. So the first port of call is to take the rear bumper off. It's effectively just a couple of screws and clips. So we're going to get that off, get that bumper safe. We can have a look underneath the car properly as well. So much more simpler than a Smart 451. It's a Torx screw here, three across here. One, two, three, and then it pretty much just pops off. I've lied to you, there's also some of the at the bottom there, so an extra two. Now the car is 20 odd years old, and so clips are gonna start to get brittle. There goes the bumper. And out comes the jack, funded by the good people of YouTube. So if you've ever watched the uh, videos, you will know that uh, your revenue goes straight back into the channel. So every single penny that we earn from, uh, from YouTube goes back into making more videos for you guys. Give me the locking wheel and stuff out, will you, mate? And out comes the old trusty Taskmaster jack as well. Now, it's, it's good that we've got two jacks because we can jack things up evenly. Don't forget to put your axle stands in. That is really important. Dual wielding jacks. These smart cars have a habit of buggering off. So make sure you chop the front wheels as well. Don't forget to put your axle stands in. They're sort of vintage, are they called bottle stands? What are they called? What the hell do I know, Gromit? <laughs> They're like a ratchet bottle ones. Looking good. Are you happy you're safe? You've got your uh, axle stands in. I think so, dude. Good stuff. Time to get the wheels off. Off comes the wheel. And now we can see the suspension components there, the shock absorber, the spring. These springs aren't mounted over the shock absorber. They're mounted to the chassis. That should hopefully make that job a little bit easier. Although I've just realised something. What's that, mate? That means we don't get to use the contraption. Good. If you haven't seen the other video, uh, Dad has created a contraption because, well, the spring compressors that we own aren't very good. Um, we could probably do three as opposed to two. But Dad's created a contraption with angle iron and all sorts of bits and pieces, which we also don't advocate trying at home. That's the second wheel off. How's it looking? It's looking like I'm going to take my jumper off. Right, so the X-frame is coming off. Uh, we've recently replaced these control arms because the bushes were no good. If you haven't seen that video, it's also on the channel. So that's the two bolts out of the arms, and then there's just two in the chassis to remove, which is here and here. Because uh, they're all greased and... Uh... Well, they were only out, what, less than four weeks ago, do you reckon? A bit more than that. Time flies when you're having fun. Made that look easy. Off comes the second one. Top tip, if you take an X-frame off, you can get at things easier. 
Let's take a look at these shock absorbers whilst we're here. You can see that them bushes aren't the best. There's the shock there. It's a little bit weepy. And it attaches into the subframe there. Right, so we've had a cup of tea. It's now time to tackle the suspension. I'm all wired for sound, mate. You are, I can hear you. That's yes, good, I can then. hear you. Now time to tackle the suspension um, on this side. We're going to remove the spring and the shock absorber. And like I said in the introduction, we put new springs and shock absorbers on the front of the car and it totally changed the ride. Is it looking like an easy job? <laughs> Famous last words. I think I'll keep my mouth shut. Famous last words. Let's have a look at the stuff. So like I said, again in the introduction, I've ordered some springs. These are from a company called Apex. It's what we've put on the front. 30 pounds for a pair of these. They were next day delivery. Um, there and there. And in here, we've got the QH shock absorbers. So we'll get them open and have a look at them. They're not handed either. So all you need is a QAG. 181104 and they're both for the same uh, side. So what's the plan of attack? How do we do this? Take the bumper off. Yep, which we've already done. Yeah, I think I bet you could do it with there. We need that wheel arch liner out, you see. Right, okay. So the reason we've got the back bumper off is again in a previous episode, we've just popped on a new uh, catalytic converter on the back there. So the bumper is off for that. Uh, the wheel arch liner needs to come out. So we're going to take that out. It's held in by three, well they're normally, plastic nuts on some pegs. However, uh, we've had to do some repair to the tridian cell previously. Um, so they're held in by uh, what self-tapping screws? Yeah, they are, mate, yeah. Self-tappers. Not the easiest thing to get out, these wheel arch They sort of flex, but uh, a bit of jiggery poker and out it comes. I think it's been relieved in the past, but I reckon it goes in before they put the subframe in. And out it comes. There it is, it's I out. Needed that, didn't I? I needed that. Well, there it is. What can we see? So what we've got then, think about it. We've got the uh, X-frame disconnected because we want to drop the arms down when we do the springs. Yeah. So we're just going to take these off now because you need to take these off anyway. And how do they come off? They're just held in place with some bolts, aren't they? Just a bolt, yeah. We're on the stands and we've got jacks under the lower arms because we need to move them up and down. So the shock absorber doesn't seem to be, well, no, too can't. broken. Uh, but we'll soon find out, won't we, when we put the new one on. In comparison. We're not wasting our time though, are we? No, because the bushes are shot. The bushes are no good, my almighty load. So just explain the jack. What are you doing having the jack under that Taking the weight off the bolts. Son. Just taking the weight off so it feels comfortable to come out. Yep. So I don't want to bruise the thread up by... Will you reuse that bolt then? Yes, mate. Up here. Let's have a look up there. What we've got up here, I wonder. Got a nut. Hopefully it's the same as the other end. It might be more problematical, eh? Well, yeah, because it's never been off, has it, since you've had it? No, we've never we've never put some new shock absorbers on it. No, not. So next to it, quite tightly packed into it, is the secondary air pump, which uh, often throws up codes on these well, they seize up, smart they? cars, they do, they seize up. We haven't replaced that. In fact, when we did the engine rebuild, we sort of blanked it off. So delete. Took it out, we've deleted it, which is not something we've invented. It's a uh, standard modification. So this could be uh, more difficult. Well, it's all, it's coming real. It's, ah, it's not seized up anyway. Excellent news. Because the bolt can seize in the hole. bit of lube. Just something, we don't want to make them grunting noises like that. <laughs> so what normally goes wrong with these? Oh, 
What goes wrong is your air pump's in the way. Oh dear. Aha! We can do the, can you see how shot the bushes are? They're not, they're not failed uh, as such. They're no good though, are they? We'll do a test with the old shock absorber. Oh, no, we're going to do the old... Uh... And the new shock absorber. Now to the other side then, to take the shock absorber out, and then we can drop the subframe and drop the arms, so the springs will pop out. With that then... Your mum's going to complain about her tail. Oh, you made the right mess of that. <laughs> with that, it's best practice to replace these things in pairs. Would you have to remove the shock absorber this side if you were just replacing one shock absorber? Make the job a lot easier. So this side again, looking a bit grim, looking a bit grotty. Again, the bushes have failed, even if the shock absorbers haven't. So we're not wasting our time. How's the uh, roll bar links looking? Don't know. We'll have a look at them in a minute. Great big mountain rubber at the front there, but we've checked it in the past, and last time I checked it, it was okay. That one seems a bit tighter than the other side. It certainly is, mate. Yeah. And that one's out now. And out comes the shocky. There it is. So now the subframe and the arms can be dropped down. No, just the arms dropping down, the subframe's staying there. Oh, of course. So now the arms can be dropped down so the springs can be removed. And you couldn't see that. Hey, what you found there? That spring's broken, look. No way. There it is. How did we miss that? You couldn't see it. <laughs> Amazing. Well, we're not wasting our time then. It's definitely broken, mate. to slacken the hub bolts. Well, I'm certainly shocked that that spring was broken. Yeah. Right, dinner time over. Shall we check these shock absorbers that we've taken Shall off Shall we now? do the official test? Yeah, let's do the test. Got Shall the new one out. Let's do it in one. the daylight. This is the official way to test shock absorbers, eh? <laughs> oh. <coughs> So that, the old one compressed quicker. Oh, my God. Oh, dear, look at that. She's a bit sad compared to the other one. Yeah, Show me again. Oh, I can hardly press that with the new one. Oh. So that one's all the way down, that one's all the way down. We're all the way down. Let's go, let's have a look. Oh, look at that. We're not wasting our time anyway. Well, the good news is that is has proved we're not wasting our time. Oh, there's the old shock absorbers as well, all the stuff we've taken off the smart car recently. So what's the plan then? We've got this spring off actually because it's broken. We're gonna put stuff on, mate. We're gonna put stuff back on. Have we got the spring off the other side yet? No. No. Because we've got to, uh, we've... we've got to undo the hub nuts to get enough room. Hub nut? Well, it's a bolt, isn't it? Not an hub nut. So just, you go put your foot on the brake and I'll just undo these bolts. We need a multi-spline socket. Your old X socket doesn't fit, look. So it's a 12-point socket you need. Why are you loosening off the it'll hub give, bolt? It'll give us a bit more room. It'll give us a bit more room to drop the suspension down without putting weight on the drive shafts and the axle. Can we uh, check the brakes while we're here? Yes, son. Excellent. 
So there's the new shock absorber, there's the new spring, and actually there's the old spring, which I didn't expect to be broken, but it is. There's a comedy hat Tucked for you. Tucked inside that rubber bit. Tucked right inside there. No oh, I see. So there's a locating point there, and it's gone just in there. Amazing. You'd never know if you hadn't got it that far, because you couldn't see that, could you, when you no. looked? That would probably pass an MOT, because you wouldn't notice it. Because you normally put your hand up and feel for the end, broken end. Anyway, we found it and it's being replaced. How do we take this side out? Well, now we took the hub bolt out. We can lower that down, mate. That's it. Ah, and you take the drive shaft out. Right, then you can take that jack out of the way. Yep. There you go. Oh, well then. Just make sure we don't damage anything. Then we can go and force that down and push that out. Take the bump stop out. That's an easier way of doing it with that hub bolt removed. Hub bolt. And that drive shaft out. You can soon make a garden art sculpture of all the things that we've taken I've off the got smart better car. Things to be doing than making garden art sculptures. But short on things to do. Uh, so how do we refit this then? That goes in the bump stop. That's the new spring. Yeah. Is it really as simple as just locating it and putting it back on? Well, that we've had a look, haven't we, to see if there's a proper piece. way of doing it. As far as I can see, we don't want that really long bit pressing at the front. Uh, um, I can't see a blinking thing. No, it's quite bright in the sunshine. I can't see a blinking thing. So we want that end at the back, in my opinion. We might need a two-man... No, it's not a two-man job, but it might fall off. Can you tell me what you need? Do you want me to push down on here? Yes, please. Hang on a minute. Right, hang on a minute, Gromit. Yeah. No, don't, 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 if you can get the jack. Yep. Under there. I'll get my legs under here. Are you clear? Yeah, I'm not clear, because I'm not holding that up. Because that falls out, all that rubber comes out of where it lives. Okie dokie, can you put the jack under? Oop, just on the end. That's it, off you go. You tell me when. Yeah, and I'm just going to... That went on. Good job your fingers were clear. Fingers. 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 OK. Yeah, leave that like that now. Let me just make sure all that's located. Fingers. Absolutely perfect. Excellent news. Yeah. We'll do it to the side. So not putting the... Uh, Shock absorber in yet, we'll do the other spring, right? Yeah, because we need to lift that up a bit more yet. Yep. I don't want to do it yet. So same again, going to remove that drive shaft. Turn that right down. I need that bit pushing down. Yep. Right. Have you used a bit of inertia? Right, up, 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 up. Hmm. Hang on. Well, actually, them springs went in there easier than I expected. But the trick is now is to put the bottom on first, isn't it? Yes. We found that out, didn't we? So drive shafts are going back in. How's that looking? Looking excellent, mate. So you're looking underneath now, what are you looking for? Just to make just sure, making sure that it's all gone together nice. Yep. I've come to have a look as well. Yeah, it's all right to me. Exhaust on here. Hi, someone's put a new exhaust on it. Oh, that's nice of them. That was a workman for an hour this morning. Right. <laughs> Let's put the shockies on then, son. What are you doing? 
Well, when they've been laid in the old, they don't give you instructions to do it now. But when they've been laid on the side, they don't work properly for a time or two. Oh, so they need priming. Well, that's what you used to do in the old days. Just by giving them a pump up and down. Yeah. Just gets the hydraulic fluid inside moving, I suppose. It's in the right place, I think. So copper slip on the bolts. Yeah. And then in we go. Let's double check they're all the same. So you've got that located. Now to send the jack up. Go on, mate. Stop. Find my tools, wherever they are. <coughs> Just putting everything together loose. So nothing's being tightened up yet, no? Not yet. Not no. until it's all together. Yes, yeah, so which is the easiest way to do it. Uh, We're getting there, though. There's the second one. Anyway. Primed, 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 and ready for action. We put the bottom on first. I actually am shocked as to how broken the old shock absorbers were. It's interesting to see, dude, isn't it? Jack working. Yes, mate. Go on. Go on. Tell me when. Well, in my humble opinion, that's the, easy. <coughs> that's the easiest way to do it. How's your shin? It's not, it's my knee bone. Oh. Top tip, do the bottom one first. I was going to say, you made that one look easy. So we're learning all the time. Learning all the time, son. So there's the new shock absorber, and there's the new spring. This has got to be infinitely better now. I think they're the original shock absorbers that we took off. And if they are... Oh, I think you're right. ...then they're 20 years old. There's this one. So now to tighten this side up, and then we're done. No, we're not. We're done for shock absorbers and springs. Are we? Is the brake's got a bit of a problem, do you think? With a pull or squeak or... I just think we need to check them out because we've not checked them out for a long while. <laughs> then we can put the uh, bolts in for the X-frame things. X-factor. Have you got the X-factor frame? <laughs> the X-factor frame. Remember we've put the weight on. Going together all right so far. Satisfying to see nice new bits on. Well, it'll soon be triggers broom. It really will. I'm trying to think of parts on this car we haven't replaced. Uh, bits we ain't done yet. It's got the original turbo, hasn't it? Right, let's do this side then. Do you need me to work the uh, jack again? Oh. Where's the end of that bolt there? Looks all aligned to me. Don't know what the official term for these links are. It's not going to come undone, Gromit. Now it's time to torque the hub bolts up. 
really important to do this. Uh, I've been online, I've checked the torque settings. 30 Newton meters plus 19 degrees. What's that you're putting in there? I'm just putting some white grease in there so they don't seize in situ. It also helps everything tighten up all right. I'm guessing officially this is supposed to be replaced because the fronts are 120 newton meters plus 90. Yeah, 30 isn't much, is it? No. 30. So not torqued too much, but the 90 degrees, you say will give it... Is it a lot more, isn't it? A lot more. What you got there? Angular torque gauge, dial gauge thing. You know what it is, you've done one before. It's a regular occurrence on the channel at the moment. 90, make sure that's not going to move. How much more have I got There down? we go, we're on 30 at the moment. Keep going, 20. That's not going to work. I'm going to break that tool. A new tool needed. You're going to get Big Bertha. Yeah, it might break that uh, adapter if I'm not careful. Right. Yep, you're on 20. Z0. That shifted it. Now to the other side. 30. 20. 10. Keep going. Keep going. Zero. Good. So everything's tight, everything's back on. Wheel arch line is to go back in, but yeah, let's just have a look at the uh, rear brakes that while we're here. Works. It's only a couple of uh, screws, isn't it? Mm. How's that looking? Give me a chance, I only just took the bugger and drum off. <laughs> let's have a look in there. Just took the buggering drum off. Well, the shoes appear okay. Dad will check out that cylinder. It looks all right, might just need a clean out. Thankfully, I've been to tool station this morning and bought some brake cleaner. I must have known when I bought you three tins of brake cleaner this morning. You only brought me two. Oh, one's in my van still. <laughs> You're taking one out. No, no, it's clean, yours. Clean I'm... your windowsills with. <laughs> It's yours, I forgot to bring it out. That's not seized. That's not seized. That's not seized. That's good news. So you're putting it back together yet, I'm just trying that. That brake cleaner, you literally just spray in and it cleans all the gum off, eh? That's it mate, it's a super solvent. Can you use too much brake cleaner? Yeah, because it's expensive. <laughs> right. Good. Well, let's take the glazing off. So you've just sort of sanded the inside of that. What did you do just that to for? Glaze, take the glaze off. Just takes a bit of rust off this edge. That brake's looking good then, is it? Looks all right to me, mate. Next. Right, this side then. Just checking for leaks, making sure the wheel cylinder's not seized. Make sure all the bits are on. Are those brake shoes are okay, there's plenty of meat on there, isn't there? Yes, mate. I'm surprised how much dust there is in here, actually. 
Does it look like it could be binding? Uh, it looks to me like it's been driven hard. Oh, wow. It does get driven like a little go-kart. That's all drying out now. Clean the inside of the uh, drum cover. This is just called the drum. Oh, that's just the drum, is it? It's not not the drum the cover. Drum. Whilst we're here, whilst we've got the wheel arch liners out, I think it would be a good idea to rust treat this subframe at the back here. Like we did on the 451, I'm going to get myself a wire brush and I'm going to clean all this out and then Dad's going to get the airline out and we'll just spray it. We'll cover this with a bag like before and we'll clean and protect all in there. So just like the front and the 451, I've cleaned all that off with a wire brush. Now I'm going to use some rust converter on there and then we shall spray it with Tetra Seal just to give it a little bit of uh, protection and it makes it look much better. So just as we did with the 451, we're going to inject the tridian cell from the rear here into the sills just to protect that as well, just to get some wax in there because they do suffer with rot. a weak spot and rot. Go on, give me some air, please. Arch. Go on then, give her a squirt. Ah, that's satisfying. Same again this side, in the hole, to coat that wheel arch. And now we're doing inside the subframe here, just to coat all that as well. That's all that side coated. It will dry off beautifully, that will. Absolutely lovely. Time to put the wheel arch liners back in and on, back bumper on, wheels on, and then test drive. In goes the next one. On goes the wheel. What is it you've just discovered? The rear bush in the lower arm has got some play in it apart from the fact that the roll bar link's knocking that'll be another job for another day right let's put the bumper back on eh so remember it slides on it does slide on so we've noticed a tiny little hairline crack in one of the brackets on the back bumper um so we're going to repair that before we put the back bumper on as is common with these cars, they are made out of plastic, they are 20 odd years old. Um, it's best to see it now and put a bit of plastic on the back and weld it in than uh, it cause a big problem sort of 40 miles down the road and crack and fall off. Um, it's not the only crack on the car, I've had to repair one where I hit a rabbit a couple of years ago. So before we put the uh, bumper back on, which will take sort of 24 hours to cure, um, we're going to just repair that crack. In the meantime, however, I am going to get the car on the deck and have a look at the suspension and see how the car sits. Fingers crossed it sits much better than it did. Axle stands are out and it's time to slowly 
lower the car down. That one's out. That looks better. Difficult to tell without the back bumper on, but it appears to be sitting well level now. Well, there it is then. Two new shock absorbers, two new springs fitted to the Smart 450. Much easier, if I do say so myself, than the front. And as you can see, the car is sitting nice and level. I've actually sat in the car. I don't feel like I'm sat at a 45 degree angle now looking at the sky. It's nice and level. Um, I've driven it up and down the driveway. As you can see, the back bumper is not on yet due to the fact that we've had to do some repairs and that's gonna take 24 hours to cure. So we're not putting that back bumper on at the moment. The car sounds so much better with the new exhaust on. That's on a separate video if you haven't seen that already. But just going up and down the drive, it feels totally different. Yes, we've got an issue to address on the front near side with the arm, but that isn't making too much of an issue at the moment to the feel of the car. 100 quid to do that. Why haven't we done that sooner? Seven years it took to replace the uh, suspension components. The ones on the back, I think, <laughs> were the ones it left the factory with 20 years ago. We'll have a chat with Dad, see what he thinks to the job. And that'll be the end of the video. Right, you've had a full day of spannering. I have, yeah. On the 450. Uh, let's talk about the suspension. How did that go? Good, easy peasy. Went all right, easy peasy. Sort of four bolts on that. It went okay. Happy with the results? You say so. It's... What does it, wait, what does it look like? Does it look good? Does it look better? Well, yeah. It's now sitting nose down again, isn't it? Sit, sit in the car. Go get in the no, car. No, I'm not. I'm all grubby. Well, it's all right. I've got a seat protector on there. You go get in the car. You go have a look. You tell me how it feels. Feels like a blooming purple smart car. <laughs> and you've hoovered it out. I have hoovered it out. How's it feeling now? Well, it doesn't feel as though I'm looking at the stars. I'll yeah, exactly. Certainly sits level. And it sounds better with the new exhaust. Oh, you're going to take it for a spin? Go on yeah, then, take, us up, take us up the drive. I've seen it's the exhaust catching. What's catching? I've seen if that exhaust catches when I put it under load. No, it doesn't, no. No, because that exhaust needs to reshaping. Feeling better? Wish we'd got a genuine exhaust. That exhaust has got a lot of altering to do. Needs a little bit of jiggery poker. Needs a bit it? of jiggery poker and make it fit properly, yeah. But uh, sadly, we can't put a genuine exhaust on it because, well, you can't get them anymore. I've tried. I remember the last time you fitted one of these to it. The brackets are good. Ah, Finch, out of line. What's the plan with that? Bend it. <laughs> Joking apart, though. Yeah, when, you, if, when we fitted it, it touches the X-frame if it put the brackets on where the brackets are. Joking apart, though, so from a suspension point of view, happy with the job? Well, everything's going to be new soon, isn't it? Well, yeah, that front control arm we've got to replace. And is it a link, something anti-roll yeah, bar it's link? It's a knock for roll bar link. Big job. What a, then all we've got at the back then yeah. is that big donut in the middle of the rear arm, which I think's all right yeah. today, but it might not be tomorrow. <laughs> what else is there left? There isn't anything else left to renew at the back, is there? We've replaced pretty much everything. All the engine mounts, I did look at the engine mountains today, they're still all right. I've had to replace one of those. Have we done an engine mount on it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we did, didn't we? That front one. Yeah. <laughs> right. Cue the outro.
Yeah. Joking apart, though, it's all right, isn't it? Yeah, it's just that you keep chucking money at it, don't you? Just keep opening the door and throwing a hundred pound at it. Is it worth it? What else am I going to spend my money on? If you've enjoyed the video, if you could give it a thumbs up, please. If you haven't already done so, comment down below. What do you reckon? What shall we do next? What will break next on the Purple Smart? Are we throwing good money after bad? Maybe I should just open the boot and just throw money in it. <laughs> Till next time, have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. If you've enjoyed this video, I've selected a few more specially for you on this page. Click either side to select them now. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button to always stay up to date with the channel.